Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 355. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It's Monday, July the 3rd. It is. Uh, it is a national holiday tomorrow on the 4th here in the United States. Happy 4th of July, y'all. Yeah. If you're in my neighborhood, you've been celebrating with fireworks for four <laughs> nights straight. My dogs really appreciate that. <laughs> Pearl's super happy. <laughs> she barks at them. Yeah. And runs in circles. So if you haven't listened to the podcast before, I have a great Pyrenees mutt, and her name is Pearl. And she thinks that she can get fireworks to stop by running from the back of the house, the front of the house, the back of the house, and barking the whole time. Mm -hmm. And my dog normally does not bark. Yeah, she's she pretty really quiet. Isn't a barker. Um, so I hope that happens while your dog's sitting her, so, because that'll yeah. be super fun. You know what's funny is I didn't even realize that we've got this um, neighborhood like website called Next Door. Um, and you might have it in your area. When we moved back, it, we had a flyer in the mail about it. And so you join in, you put in your address, and you get, like, it's like a message board for the people in your That's area. That's how we found the cookie lady. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, like, if there are lost dogs, the people post about it there, and it's relevant to the people that get it because you're in that neighborhood. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, Michael, my husband, mentioned something to me yesterday that we were talking about the fireworks and you know how the dogs get super upset both of my dogs do and apparently it's a it's something to consider for veterans with PTSD and I had never oh, even yeah. thought of that I could think of that yeah you know and it's not like either of us have an issue with people sending even though it's illegal in this particular county is um, it yeah, in most of the cities in the county, it's illegal. It's they a city sell fire ordinance. Like, they sell fireworks, though, like, all over this county. Yes. That is super weird. In certain cities in the county, it's against the law to set them off. But, I mean, the penalty is a $50 fine. Oh. So. Like, years ago, um, and it's not just 4th of July in this area. People set them off at New Year's, too, which mm -hmm. I hadn't experienced until oh, I moved yeah. to this area. But, like, years ago, New Year's um, Eve, like... I would be leaving your house and, like, in the circle, in the cul-de-sac, like, outside my parents' house, they would be, like, setting off, and I couldn't get back to my house because mm. they were setting off a giant, and I'm like, I'm not driving over fireworks to get back there. Yeah. And then one year it rained, so my neighbor was setting them off in his garage. That's safe. And like, watching them, I was like, so when the Doctor entire approves. house burns down, That's or like you set my house on fire. It's like using one of those turkey fryers in your bathroom or something. Like, why would you do that? But but people do. The issue I have is that around here, at least, it's not. It's not like people don't wait to do it on the Fourth of July. No, it's been happening for a week. And that's how it is at New Year's too. Yeah. They'll start like Christmas and start setting them off. It's. And there's these big tents that sell them mm -hmm. for like they've been selling them for over a month. Yeah. You spend five dollars, we will give you a hundred dollars worth of fireworks <laughs> for free. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is not a show about fireworks because <laughs> we're so expert. <laughs> yeah. This is actually a show about knitting. Mm. Um, I will go ahead and apologize in advance if there's noise. My sister and her kids are here, and um, April, the thirteen-year-old, really wanted to sit in here and watch us record the podcast. She, did. she watches a lot of gaming podcasts mm -hmm. that are recorded live on YouTube. Yeah, and she's like, "I just want to watch how you do it," and I'm like, "You should teach her how to do it." I just sit and talk to the computer. That's really all it is. But um, she and Kobe can start their own podcast about gaming. They've been playing for like six hours almost, so I'm just leaving that alone. There you go. Um, so knitting, would you like to go, or do you want me to? Um, I'm almost at the end of this row, so if you would go, that would be okay. swell. So, I actually don't have a ton to show this week. Um, last week I had three finished objects, so I feel like I get a little float this week. <laughs> uh, um, I have been doing some crafting, but a lot of it's been like prep work. I have bought some fabric to sew Laura and I aprons for SSK, because yes. the ones we have don't work as well as I would like. Mama um, Lineman made them really quickly last mm -hmm. minute, two years in a row for us, and they're like tie around the waist. We want fancy aprons. Well, and it's just that, making. like, even if you tie it around your waist super tight, an hour later, it's going to look like you've got a big belly flap just flopping around. Well, it's yeah, because we stick everything. Yeah. But I've Tickets, had to, like, money. <laughs> um, totally. surge all the edges of the fabric and pre-wash it. And then I'm working on binding Laura's quilt that's yes. her sort of birthday. Yes. Um, birthday for two years. Yeah. So... 
I've been doing a lot of stuff. I think my birthday month really gets extended yeah. here until you give me the quilt. <laughs> it just continues for infinity and beyond. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing a lot of stuff that I just is not super practical to show you guys, but um, I did cast on my July Desert Vista Dye Works Ooh, did socks. You? So is that what you're working on? Mm -hmm. Oh, cute! So Desert Vista Dye Works is a dyer of self-striping yarns. She does a monthly knit along sock club of her yarns. All the details can be found on her Ravelry group, Desert Vista Dye Works. You can just search for that in the groups. Um, the colorway that I'm using is our anniversary kit color. So it's the seven year itch. The colors make me think of Seashore Sharon. Oh yeah. And I've just started it. I do not have a full repeat in yet, but I'm almost there. I love that darker turquoise. Yeah. Appears. And I also I'm, love gray. Yeah. And the, the blues are thinner stripes and then the gray and the peach are thicker stripes. Nice. So I'm excited to see how that looks once I've got a little bit more going. Um, my socks as always are knit on 2.25 millimeter needles. And this is just a merino nylon base. Nothing super fancy. It's just our exclusive color there you go. from Susan. Although she can start selling it at any Oh, yeah. It was exclusive to. only until the kit came out. She can do. That's the way we are with all of our dyers for anything that we do. You know, we have no desire to own the rights for any of that. Just until we release it, like for goodie bags or whatever, and then it's back to them. So the other thing that I'm working on a little bit is my birch sap shawl. This is by Jenny Faithful, and it is an asymmetrical feathering fan shawl. Not something I would typically knit. Um, and it is out of WIP yarns in the Castle Stone colorway. So it's a sort of a kettle dyed gray, different shades of gray with rust and teal in there. And I wound the second skein but I haven't actually started knitting it into. I got to the point where I finished the first skein. Oh, so that was the second skein. I was going to ask you. Yeah. I was like, that's a huge skein to still be knitting on. So the way that this one works is you do a sort of a typical top-down triangle until you get to a certain point, and then you bind off half of those stitches. And, and then, then you knit. just start working on the other side. Right. That's super smart. Yeah, so I'm only a few rows past, oh, maybe 10 rows past, where I bound off this edge and um, nothing fancy, but I've enjoyed it. It's a cool construction. Yeah. So there's that. And then I swatched. What so did you swatch for? I swatched for this while we were watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> the new version. Cry Wilderness, which I did not finish <laughs> because it was that bad. <laughs> I mean, MST3K was funny, but right. the movie itself was like... Random stock footage of animals. No dialogue. <laughs> Bigfoot. Yeah. In a so, crazy costume. I am using, for the swatch, um, Jared Flood's uh, Brooklyn Tweed's Plains Lace Weight in the Treehouse colorway, which is uh, Rambolet Wool. And cool. I am swatching for... Uh, the Shibano Lace Vest. So, oh. this is something we got at, um... We purchased from Bijou Basin. Oh, God. Saf? Yes, that mm -hmm. one. Saf. And I bought yarn for it at Saf. The problem is that the yarn it calls for is, like, 95% Angora, which is bunny. Um, and it's very warm, very light and warm. Yeah. Um, but I don't particularly like wearing Angora because I feel like it ends up in my nose. Did more you than purchase Angora for me? No. Okay. So the problem is that I purchased like um, a super fancy silk like buffalo blend, mm -hmm. which I did swatch for this in it, but it's so much heavier than the Angora oh, is that, it's like that it would just drape right you would mm -hmm. lose all the lace it would just be a drapey yeah piece of fabric so what i decided to do was to use a light you should use that wool. for like another nuvum right yeah. something drapey and that's intended to be that way so um the wool is great so this was just a little tie but it's got so much spring in it it makes me mm -hmm. happy so I swatched uh on <laughs> that is a very small swatch i haven't blocked it <laughs> um 
but yeah, it's got nice oh. lace. And so you swatched the actual lace and cable pattern. Right, I swatched exactly what it said to swatch, which was X number of repeats of the lace pattern. So it's much more open and lighter than the swatch I had done before. So you're going to block that mm -hmm. and see if you get gauge. Exactly. I'm going to block it out and see whether or not I Did get gauge. Did you already change your needle size before you knit the swatch? I didn't. Typically. I usually go up a needle size, mm -hmm. but for this one, I decided... You go down, don't you? Um, or do you go up? I go usually... up because I knit tightly. Okay. So, or I knit That's right. slightly knit tight. more um, tightly than, than usual, whereas you end up having to go down. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I do need to block it. I'm not certain whether or not it's going to meet gauge. I haven't done any measurements yet because I just I swatched and bound off and that was it. But um, it's much lighter. So if it works, it'll be a much better fit for that particular garment. Is it a woolen spun or a worsted? It's a worsted spun. Okay. The newer lace weight is a woolen spun. Okay. But I had already purchased this from house. Yeah. Um, I think it was ago. on the way back from SAF or okay. the way to SAF. I think it was the same trip. Um, it's a pretty color. Too. Yeah, and it's actually, it feels good. So um, I hope that it works. You can't see Leslie fondling the swatch off camera. <laughs> yeah, it's, she is. it's really, it's got a lot of bounce and mm -hmm. stretch to it. So when I block it, I'll wet block it. So I'll let it soak for 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll gently stretch, not to its limit, but just gently stretch it a little bit and pin it and see how it, how it looks. Um, I'm interested to see if it poofs a little bit because Rambouillet typically yeah. gets a little poofy. The content of the wool is Rambouillet. It's 100% American um, Rambouillet wool. So hmm. I'm hoping because it was it was really nice to knit with for that little bit. So we'll yeah. see. But that's it. That's all I'm knitting on. I have no finished objects. I have no spinning. Um, I'm pretty <laughs> much useless for the rest of the show. You are not. <laughs> Except as eye candy. You're welcome. <laughs> So I am just knitting on one thing because I have to get it done by Friday um, to block overnight before I get on a plane Saturday morning. So I am knitting on the second bounce blanket, y'all. I started it Saturday. And so, ooh, it's caught. So I'm trying to do four repeats a day, but I have not. I just started my knitting on it for today because I went and hung out with a friend today and spun this morning. So, um, they live in Buffalo, and these are the Buffalo Bills colorways. So, red, and then there's a navy, and then it's going to a light blue, and then there's another blue that it's going to go as well. Cool. Um, I'm a little worried about, so I did get through the navy. I was worried. You were down to the wire on that, right? I was, I had like a, a ball like that size mm. at the end, like a little, like a ping pong ball size. Um, I'd used navy in the first blanket, so I was using the leftovers, and while my scale told me I would have enough, I was a little bit concerned. The first blanket also used, like, one skein of this almost exactly, mm -hmm. like, maybe four yards left over. And this is, like, the, the break, the color that breaks yeah. it all up. So, I'm a little bit worried about not having it, but I can shorten it one row. Like, if I need to, I'll right. just do the bind off one row less. I don't think she'll notice. So I need to get this done and blocked by Friday. <laughs> Today is Monday. Today is Monday. So it's it's totally it's doable, doable, but it does require some. It is gonna require some concentration yeah. and um, focus. One repeat takes me. Well, I can get four repeats done in three episodes. Of each stripe summer. is a repeat. Yeah. So each gray. So each yeah section of so four is equals three episodes of Midsummer Mysteries. So. That's a lot of Midsummer Mysteries. Because they're an hour and a half each. Yowza. So, an hour and 33 minutes, to be exact, on Netflix. Which, that's a British mystery series, if you're not familiar with it. So, we'll get there. Um, if I can just get one done tonight, I'd be happy with that. I built in a little bit. Four a day built me in, like, an extra day. Yeah, so. and you've been, I mean, you've been gone almost all day. It's it, We started recording at around 7 p.m., so... Yep. Um, I spun a little bit this morning during tour, um, tour de France, but yeah, I've been gone most of the day today. It's funny because so. I always know when it's tour because I wake <laughs> up and I have like 300 missed text messages because I'm in a group with Laura, our friend Jess, and Lynn. Uh-huh. Lynn's been quiet yeah. this tour. She's not as like into watching. it as you and Jess are. <laughs> That's Well, usually she is. She's just traveling this But it's tour. like, it's non sequitur stuff. Like, oh my God, did you see what he just did? Or, <laughs> I love that tie and there's no picture. And I'm like... <laughs> Okay. Because we're watching it at right. the same time. 
We did the same thing with, like, when um, we both had Acorn subscriptions, we'd watch, like, Agatha Christie together. We did the same thing with movies, too. We start at the same point. Um, and we did that once, and Lynn thought we were watching something else. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching... Hurry on a train yeah. or something, yeah. We were watching, um... Oh, uh, Perot Mystery, and Tim Curry was in it, and so she picked the wrong episode, and she's like, I don't see tennis <laughs> ones. <laughs> They're just on a train. It was very funny. Um, so that is what I'm working on, hardcore, until I leave. I haven't thought about travel knitting yet. I texted my sister-in-law yesterday asking her what she's bringing, and she's bringing socks and a poncho to work on. And Mama mm-hmm. Linneman has, I don't know what Mama Linneman's working on. I don't know. She has something to work on. I do have two finished objects, though, too. Yep. Because it was the end of the month. So I had to knit very quickly. I knit, and this only took around four hours to knit. So I think this is going to become one of my go-to baby patterns for little girls. I've had it in my queue forever. (laughs) Well, she did a knit along this month. So this is Lisa Chemerly, I think her name is. Um, It's the... Entrecha? Entre shots, and there's a woman's version of this too. So this is the zero to three month size. What I love about this is it's a top down raggling kind of. Um, you knit the front, and then you knit the two sleeves and the back, and then you go back and pick up this front band, and buy you buy off the sleeves, and then pick up. This is a picked up line. Hmm. So all those stitches are picked up for the front, and then you kind of like do some magic. And there's this cute little slip stitch pattern. Yeah, I like that. There's a little flounce in the back. back. Um, And one buttonhole. And then you're done. If I was to knit it again, I might do a little bit of garter on the sleeves. Like extend the sleeves a little bit. I like it, though, because it's... I always worry about knitting, like, full-on cardigans for babies. Because babies like to vomit. Um, Yeah. And they aren't super concerned about whether what they're wearing is, you know, handmade heirloom. So quick on and off with a one button is a big selling point. Yeah. And I would say it is a little more feminine, so it would be hard, a harder yeah, sell for a boy. Yeah, definitely if, like, more of a girl with the flounce and stuff. If you're, like, if you try to stick within gender, you know, like, norms or whatever, but. So this is going in my bin for, because my coworkers are always getting yep. preggers. I knit it on size seven needles, so I went down a size, and I knit this out of Mad Tosh DK Merino, which mm-hmm. is a single ply. I knit a baby hat out of this, um, one of those bunny, the Susan the B. Ears, Anderson yeah. bunny ones, um, that I had given to a baby boy before. So I had like half a skein, and I was like, what can I knit with this half skein? You did it pretty quick, out? right? Like six hours. Yeah. So... Um, definitely great for like, hey, there's a baby shower in two days. It's a girl. You need to knit something type yeah. thing. So, and it'd be super cute to pair with like a little skirt and a onesie yeah. and whatever for a baby shower. So that's done and that's going in the bin. And now I have something for to give if I there's a little baby girl. With my luck, the next five babies will be boys. Yeah. But you know. And then I also finished my DVD. My Desert Vista Dye Work socks. These are Bing and the Andrew Sisters. I did uh, four thought heels, so I placed some waist yarn where I knew it was going to go and used my um, afterthought heel, heel pattern to do that. I just started with the yellow because that's I had stopped here, and so the next color in line mm-hmm. was that yellow. So that's where the heel comes out. These were knit on size zeros. Toe up. Easy peasy. Um, I haven't started this month's socks yet. I think I'm going to do Lightning Struck Heart colorway. I haven't decided yet. Those are done. I'm going to take those for sure on my trip. The the DVD socks yeah. for this month. Yeah, definitely. And these have not been washed yet. You can kind of see my lines in between the two 16-inch needles. So they need to be washed. Um... So those are my two finished objects on spinning. I have one works in progress. This is a really different wool for me. This is Boil and Bubble. It was a Southern Cross fiber. It was his last Southern Cross fiber club that he did before he took some time off. And I'm not certain how to say that wool. I think it's Char... Charlet? Charlet. It's a French wool. That's a guess. Um... 
I know it's a French wool because David said so. It's got like a crimp pattern similar to a down wool and it's kind of spinning up like a down wool. This is the first half. I'm going to Navajo or chain ply this um, because I want to keep, there's this bright, it's kind of like, it's almost fluorescent in its structure. There's a bright purple, a bright royal blue, and like a lime green, and then a yellow. So I kind of, and I'm going to do, I might do socks out of it. They won't be super wash, but I think it'd be fun to do. And I didn't spin it especially thin, but I did spin it worsted um, with a short forward draft versus woolen that would have added lots of air. It could have easily been spun woolen. And I think it might have actually spun nicer woolen, but I was kind of in a worsted mindset on that. That was spun on the ladybug. This is actually one of Leslie's bobbins that I need to return to her, but I'm being lazy. Wouldn't have even known it. Just hanging out at my house. Um, finished skeins. I have three. I love that so much. <laughs> Thank you. You can tell where I started. I don't care. I and don't how even I care. So this is a gray merino. And I was attempting to spin cocoons. So these ones that are real slubby, those were my first attempts and they weren't very good. But towards the end, I kind of got it down. They kind of look like worms. Um, so every yard or so, there's a cocoon. So it's spun over, kind of like core spun over the single as you're spinning the single. This is four and a half ounces. It's 250 yards. I want to try it again with like sari silk or something cool like that. I think that's um, freaking awesome. And something awesome. not merino. I would be so proud of that. I'm excited to see how it knits up, to be honest with you. I think it'll knit up cool. And I think I'm going to knit up like the older part first. Um, since it's like baby hats and just a fun little thing. I did wet set this. I kind of wish I had steamed it, but at the same time, it's a single. And I really wanted to... Let me open it up. I really wanted to get it... It's a single. That's, That's very... I told you, I'd be <laughs> super proud if this was mine. So, I mean, there are a couple corkscrews every once in a while, but I'm really, really happy with it overall. So I might knit a baby hat and then maybe a hat for me. It is a little thick and thin, but that's kind of the nature of it because you have to get really thin to spin over it mm -hmm. and then thick it, thicken it back out on the singles. So I'm super happy with that. It's 250 yards, 4.5 ounces. That is my sixth structure out of eight that I had to spin, so I have two more to go that I really need to start on tomorrow. Um, what other structures do you have left? That's a good question. I have a, two crepes left. Oh, okay. Um, so one's a bubble crepe, which kind of gives the appearance of like a thread ply, like Rick Rack trim kind of looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember the other one. Okay. But I need to start on them. They're both like multi ply step structures. So you spin like fat singles and then maybe ply those together and then a thin and then reply together. So it's okay. a multi step process. Um, I did feel like spinning some long draw, so I grabbed a bat, and this is from Knit Spin Farm. It is Bright Spot. It's a 3.25 ounce bat. I spun it woolen. It's got alpaca, Falkland, merino, sorry, silk, Shetland, silk, and targi in it. Um, it's 220 yards. It's a nice lofty airy yarn, and just kind of fun. It's probably going to become a hat. Woolen yarns have a lot of air, which you can kind of see to it. Um, but they don't have a ton of strength. They have less strength than like yeah, a wool. It's a, a trade-off. Yep. So this spun up super, super fast on my reefs. Um, I'm kind of hoping to get like at least four more bats spun from Knit Spin Farm during this tour, so we'll see how that goes. And then last, but not least, this is kind of my fault. This is my fault. So I reached down to the bottom of a bin, and we bought this fiber when we went to Fiber Space with Wendy Johnson, so like 2009. Oof, yeah. So it had compressed a lot because it had been sitting on I the bottom a of a bin. I had of that, and it had compressed too. Yeah. So that's my fault. Like if I had spun it right away, I'm sure it would have been a nice fiber. 
but I was having a lot of issues with spinning. I attenuated it, which means I kind of like stripped it down, mm -hmm. but also added, kind of like tried it to pull it yeah. out and stretched it. I stretched it sideways. I tried Malia's like whip it thing. Um, and I was trying to spin it thick to begin with because I knew that it was not going to go thin with for me. So it's a little bit thick and thin, but it's a nice chunky yarn. Yeah. I think I'll knit up into like this would be a great solid to do with a brioche. Oh like yeah, a chunky it would. other one for a brioche. So this is BFL top and it's got a lovely shine to it. It was dyed by Miss Babs. It's the tonic and lime colorway. I don't think she dyes fiber anymore. She does still kinkies because they're on sale right now. Okay. Um, I don't know how often how often she does fiber. It's a two ply. It's 120 yards of an Aran or chunky weight. One or the other. I haven't done like wraps print. So this is a worsted spun? Yes, okay. this is a worsted spun. This was spun on my Lendrum upright um, very quickly because I decided that last day of Harry Potter House Cup I only had five classes done and the max you can do is six and I wanted a six class and one of the prompts was do something with the color green mm. and I was like I can spin that fiber super fast so I like that's how I ended up because it was in the bottom of a bin I was like Let so me of course find it green. was the most compressed yeah of course it was in my BFL bin because I have a bin just of BFL wool but yeah I like it I like how it came out in the end I think it'll be fun for chunky 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 hats so that is what I have spun. Um, I have, I'm on three teams. Well, I'm on four teams for TDF. I'm on Acreworks, and you can spin on anything using anything for that. So that's kind of like a catch-all team. It's a really great team. So TDF is um, Tour, Tour de, de Fleece, Fleece, which is happens alongside Tour de France um, bicycling event. Yeah. And um, a lot of, like, dyers have their own special teams, but they're also, you know, like, there's a Team Sasquatch, which is... A lot All of the different podcasters, podcasters and, yeah. you know, different teams give out prizes. And, and have different rules. Yeah. And then I'm on Hello Yarn, so I started spinning one of her patchwork kits, but it's still on the wheel. And then um, the Southern Cross, you saw what I'm spinning, and mm -hmm. then I finished the Knit Spin Farm. Um, I actually have another bet that I finished that's still wet, because... Before I left to go see our friend Becca, I put in the spin dryer, like I soaked it, and I meant to hang it, and I totally like so ran out of the house. So it was still in the spin dryer, <laughs> which did not help it um, dry at all. So that should be able to be shown next week. Yeah, but that's it for me. Um, so as far as books, I finished Steal the Light, which was um, sort of a paranormal. Did you like it? Who done it? I did, and I started the second one, which was um, something else. Steal the Day. I like this. Did I already tell you I like the second series a little bit better? You did, but okay. I, I wanted to finish this one. No, you I have to finish the first one. Um, it's I haven't finished the second one. I've just started it because the second book. The follow-up to Lightning Struck Heart, um, <laughs> which is a Tales of Arania. That's the collection, Tales of Arania. The second book is called Destiny of Dragons. This is an adult book. It is. It is a male-male romance, and that is definitely a part of it. But most of it's like sass from a gay unicorn <laughs> and a half-giant and Night Delicious Face. And <laughs> it is so funny. Um, if the audiobook's even better, it I is. feel like. Um, now, the audiobook for Destiny of Dragons isn't out yet. I think it will be, but it, it, just, it didn't come out the same day. So, um, But the audiobook for Lightning Struck Heart is hilarious. I think he self-publishes. So. Um, you do have to be open to the whole male-male concept, but it is so funny. <laughs> um, so funny. I'm about 70% through that book. I think if you like RuPaul's Drag Race, yeah. you like this. It is. I've, I've been trying not to completely devour it in one sitting, because I definitely could. And I, I'm i pretty sure that there's going to be a follow-up to this because I'm 70% and the quest that they're on is nowhere near done. So um, that's a good thing and a bad thing because it means I'll have to wait like another year. Or for, two. Yeah, for and another book. Because he's got several series. Yeah. Um, T.J. Clune is the author. Um, Laura's also reading that book. I am. And I listened to... So I talked last week about The Stone Man, which was by Luke Smithered. And I liked it so much that I got another audiobook by him called um, In the Darkness, uh, the Black Room series. It was initially released as four, like, two-hour segments. 
and um, I bought the the whole collection and listened to it in like two or three days and it's I would say sort of paranormal it deals with like astral planes a little bit and projecting yourself into another person's consciousness it was so good but it was one of those books that's so hard to listen to because even though it sort of opens your mind to all these other ideas it also like brutally shows you how terrible people can be so it was really hard to listen to so as soon as i finished that i restarted the lightning struck heart on audiobooks <laughs> i was like i need something happy or i'm gonna like seriously get into a funk because it was it's heavy but it's so good um he's got i, I want to say like five other audiobooks that i'm going to listen to them but i have to put something else in between them because it's like watching too many of the walking dead in a row like <laughs> you just become numb to humanity or um, dexter or dexter yeah um you know what's funny was i watched dexter avidly while it was being like broadcast uh, yes mm -hmm. and the last season I got up to the second to the last episode and never finished it. That's how I am with So Eureka. I still have no idea how it ended. I didn't finish the last, like, four episodes of Eureka. Yeah. I do that a lot because then I'm like, in my head, it'll it, always... It's never be over. If... I've never rewatched the last m episode of MASH. I've rewatched all the other episodes probably, like, 35 times each. I've never rewatched the last episode. Mm. Anyway. The lies we tell ourselves. I know. It's not <laughs> ever... Well, uh, the last uh, Tiffany Aching book, it took me, what, two years to read it or a year? Wasn't there something that came out recently for that? Well, maybe my version of recently might have been a couple years ago. What was the last book? I can't remember the name uh, of it. It I was love after the Winter Smith. The Tiffany Aching series. So I didn't read it for the longest time because I was like, in my head, Terry Pratchett will still be alive writing books. As long as I don't read this last book. That's a really gave. good fantasy series for, I would say, teens. You know, It is. It's a little bit convoluted at times, I feel like. Yeah. But that's it's a good, like, Disc World. Yeah. And I listened to it. I didn't I did read too. it. Yeah. So I feel like he does a lot of um, footnotes mm -hmm. at the bottom. So I feel like when you listen to stuff, sometimes you don't get those footnotes clear, as clear as if you were reading it. My problem with reading him is I just skip past the You do animals. skim, yeah. Well, and Laura's a known skimmer in general. Like, if it's if it's not dialogue, she tends to skim. If you decide to write 15 paragraphs of adjectives <laughs> and adverbs <laughs> describing the forest, I don't really care. <laughs> That's fair enough. So, a lot of times if it's something I really, really like, I reread it or I uh, listen to the audio. Yeah. Like, with Alana Andrews. I listen to her audio a lot. Anyway. So, what about you? What are you reading? I am also reading the second in the Destiny of Dragon, like, the Destiny of Dragons, which is the second in the Lightning Struck Heart series. And then I'm listening to The Thief by Megan Whale and Turner. It's one of my favorite YA fantasies of all time. If you like Rick Reardon type stuff, highly recommend it. Um... And so this came out probably late 90s, and this author only releases a book, like, every five years. Mm. So the fourth or fifth in the series just came out. Um, I probably have talked about this before. And so I'm re-reading slash listening to, um, my local library had this one on audi audio. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to this one, but I've already, like, I have them all on my Kindle anyways. Yeah. And in my library, so... I'm going to read the second and third, um, and then I think it's the fourth just came out. I have a hard copy of that that I'm actually going to donate to the library, and then probably, if it's good, I'll buy the Kindle version for me. So, I'm anticipating it being good, but we'll see. Um, That's actually one of my favorite parts of, like, beloved series, is rereading them mm -hmm. when a new one's coming I out. think you and Kobe would both like The Thief by oh, Megan Whelan. put it on my list and, yeah. and check it out. The, um... I went to get the second one off of Audible because I'm going on this trip, and I was like, I can listen to that, but the narrator changed, and just looking at, like, listening, it's like a British narrator now, mm -hmm. and listening to the brief snippet, I was like, mm, I might just read in it just yeah. as I go. Like, if I have suck net talks, I can just read in it versus listening, plus yeah. it goes faster. A narrator can really make or break a book. I can, for sure. Oh, uh, the worst is, the worst narrator ever was, um... 
Oh, Ella Enchanted has a narrator that's got, she was like on a soap opera. The one, the soap opera with Bianca, but it was an Erica Kane. It was like her, children. yeah, it was like her daughter, mm-hmm. her young daughter, that actress that played her in the 2000s, not Sarah Michelle Gellar, whatever. Why do I know this much? Whereas <laughs> my roommate used to watch this one a lot. Anyway, she narrated that and it just, I cannot, cannot drives me crazy. It's like the Alana Andrews, the my favorite of her series, the Clean Sweep series, is narrated by someone whose Georgian accent is just off. And I like the, the I woman who narrates her White Hot series is the same woman who narrates the Magic series. Oh, okay. I, Renee so Rodman. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's like actually her. decent. Lorelai King and Jim Dale are my two favorite audio, but like Jim Dale could read the freaking phone book to me, and I'd just be like, "Hey, Harry Potter, I love him." Anyway, but Lorelai King, who does the Janet Ivanovich and the like Grave to the Right series, she's really good too. She does like fluff romance mm-hmm. mysteries. I like her a lot. Look, I got through one. one I had row. well, no, I did a row of lace that I had memorized, but I don't have the. That's amazing. I don't have the backside because it's every <laughs> row. I don't have the backside memorized, okay. but I have the front side memorized. So the only thing that we have left is um, this week is to draw a winner for our truffles shuffle um, stitch marker set. Ooh, and that is going to let's pull up. That's this set right here. I'm going to pull up the form. She's working on a manatee for me. She didn't know what manatees look like. See, you're not the only person who doesn't know what sea creatures look like. You're not the only dumb one. <laughs> That's not dumb. Manatees are like, and narwhals are very specific sea creatures. So I feel like manatees and platypuses are the same thing. <laughs> Except one's like... I know they're not, out. but... <laughs> the other is not. So there's this cute little ladybug in here. It's a stitch marker. It's a lobster claw stitch marker. And then there's a little gem. Sparkles. With sparkles. All right. We There were 80 entries. There were fewer because I asked people to show me their favorite meme. And I think a lot of people were like, don't we're spend <laughs> hours a day on the internet like me and aren't obsessed with memes. And I think a lot of people thought it had to be knitting related. And oh. it, it didn't. Like, I didn't say that anywhere, but it's okay. So, there were 80 entries. The first one is me. Um, So, I'm going to go to random.org, and I'm going to put in between 2 and And the number 80. Generate. 24. Wow, first page. First page. So, let's go back to the first page and go down. And number 24... Ah, it's a Maggie <laughs> Smith one. It disapproves if you're watching the Dick Needles. Phoebe Sophie. Oh. <laughs> so, Phoebe Sophie, if you will please message Laura, you can PM her on Ravelry, uh-huh. and then she'll forge your address to me. It just makes yep. it easier. Um, Some Lala on Ravelry. Yes, so just send her a private message with your address. And um, I'm going to just heart that just in case I forget who it was that... You didn't heart it. It didn't get I clicked it. it. Dang it. <laughs> See? I clicked it. I don't know. It's not coming up. Whatever. I'll just rewatch the episode if I have to. So that is the only other thing we had. Do you have anything else you want nope. to... The fourth is tomorrow. Um, we're doing a cook family cookout. I'm going to sit in it feverishly on my baby blanket. <laughs> um... At Leslie's family cookout. Yeah. Uh, My brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they have a pool at their house. So we're going to go and hang out there. And then I go on call on Thursday. Mm. And then spend the weekend um, puppy sitting. Yep. She's going to hang out with Pearl. At Laura's. Till Wednesday. It's going to be a real hardship to be (laughs) in a quiet house alone. Where you can control the air. By myself. (laughs) With a fan. (laughs) Let me tell you, I'm just, you really owe me for this one. <laughs> um, but anyway, we're going to try to record before Laura goes out of town. We'll, we'll see how that works. But uh, we hope you guys have a lovely week, and we will talk to you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.